On July 8, 2020, Glee actress Naya Rivera was reported missing when her boat was seen drifting at Lake Peru, northwest of Los Angeles. The local police is now presuming that the star has drowned while boating on a lake in California. But the authorities are trying their best to find the actress, whether dead or alive. In recent developments, the police is using sonar technology to locate Naya Rivera, who was last seen boating with her son Josie on a lake near Los Angeles. In fact, a security footage released by Sheriff's Police Office shows the actress Naya boarding, a, boarding on a boat with her four-year-old son on July 8th, hours before going missing. The actress has had gone swimming for the lake and did not return. And the police found Naya's son sleeping in the boat with his life jacket on. Now throwing some light on the incident, Rivera and her son rented a boat together and the boat was due back three hours later. But when the pair did not return, workers went out to search for them. The child was found in the boat and after a massive search and rescue operation found no trace of Rivera, the police moved to a search and recovery operation. According to the police, they are presuming that she drowned in the lake while swimming. They will continue looking for her to give closure to her family. Rivera is best known for playing cheerleader Santana Lopez in the hit show Glee, which was a hugely popular musical comedy TV series that ran from the years 2009 to 2015. All right, hopefully they're shutting down, so hopefully it'll get a little quieter. Um, good afternoon. My, my name is Eric Busho. I'm a captain with the Ventura County Sheriff's Office. I'm here to give you an operational briefing, uh, let you know where we are with this operation that's been going on for the last two and a half days now in the search for Naya Rivera. So this morning we began getting folks here at 6 a.m. We have resources here still from the Tulare County Sheriff's Office. So we have their dive team um, and they brought in some specialized equipment that is a side scanning sonar system. And so what they do is they go out and they tow these devices in the water that scan the bottom of the lake for any objects that might look like uh, a body. Uh, they've been utilizing that. They were utilizing it yesterday evening as well. Uh, last night they had a couple of images that showed up on the sonar that they thought might be promising to investigate. So this morning they sent a uh, ROV or a small robotic device down into the water uh, to examine those objects. Uh, unfortunately, they did not locate Naya Rivera. They are still searching. We have the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department here as well with similar systems on their boat. They're also scanning the lake. Um, we're putting as many assets as we can out there, as many personnel. The conditions are difficult. Again, the visibility in the water is one to two feet. So we're going to be putting a couple of uh, short video clips on our Dropbox account. They'll be available on our Twitter feed shortly so people can kind of see what these devices look like and what the conditions look like in 30 to 35 feet of water where they were looking at these objects. Um, it's very difficult conditions. Uh, we're still continuing the search and uh, we appreciate everybody's uh, cooperation. We know everyone's concerned out there about this case and uh, locating her and providing some closure for her family. So um, this is a situation, these are difficult because we don't know if she's going to be found five minutes from now or five days from now. So we're still going to be continuing this effort. Um, I'll take any questions that you guys have at this point. Well, each day we're evaluating what areas have been searched and what areas still need to be searched. So the level of personnel and equipment here may vary over the next two days. Um, today we have approximately 40 personnel on this. Uh, we're not putting divers in the water at the same pace that we were on Wednesday evening or yesterday. Uh, we're using the sonar to identify specific objects. It's very effective. They get a really detailed image and then they can go down and focus on specific things rather than putting divers in the water where they're literally feeling around because they can't see. So the sonar is a very effective tool and we're using it as best we can given the conditions that are out there. So the primary focus in this search is the north side of the lake and the east side of the lake. Based on where the boat was found on Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. in the north side of the lake, an area called the Narrows. We believe because of the wind patterns and the currents that it may have drifted from the east side of the lake here. So anywhere between there and that north side 
is being searched very heavily. You know, I don't have specifics as far as the surface area uh, of what's been covered and, and how much down below. I would have to check with the guys on that. I don't have that. I'll have to check on that. So um, the way it's explained to me is that the dog sniffs just above the water as the boat slowly travels through the lake and that the dog can detect bubbles from gases given off by a body down below and the dog will alert on those, those smells. Um, they've been using the dog yesterday and today and uh, I'm not aware of the dog hitting on anything yet. Um, Kevin, I don't know if, has there been anything with that? If the dogs do alert, they would uh, they would record the GPS coordinates of that location, and then they would put forth a dive team with uh, either an ROV or a diver to go in and check that. But there were no uh, canine hits or alerts that we're aware of. Any other questions? Yes, so um, the ROV is being utilized by the Tulare County Sheriff's Office. Uh, they have a crew out there on a boat, so they're using this, uh, the sonar systems to scan the bottom of the lake, and then if they identify any objects, they'll put the ROV down to get eyes on, so to speak, of that object. And unfortunately, the targets that they've marked so far and gone down and investigated have not been what we're looking for. So uh, the search continues. I don't have a statement from the family. Um, our investigators have been with contact with, in contact with the family since the beginning of this. Um, we have a liaison with the family, uh, working with them, and of course, they're going through an extremely difficult time. And we're trying to do everything we can to provide uh, as much resources as we can and provide some closure for them. Um, I don't know that there's a reason to do that. Um, he was interviewed uh, quite extensively on uh, the night of that afternoon. Um, so our investigators uh, completed that task right from the get-go. And that's part of what focused our resources in specific areas of the lake. It was based on where the boat was found, where it likely came from based on the wind patterns and things like that, and the statement provided by the child. We've also interviewed uh, other folks who were on the lake at the time in boats and they've provided some clarity as to where her boat may have been at specific times. So that's been very helpful as well. Have you got any new information on the inquiry since yesterday? Any new information on? On what? As far as? Oh, what items were on the boat? I don't. I don't have that. My understanding is as long as this re operation is going on, the lake will remain closed to the public. Any idea how long the operation is going to continue? It's hard to say. Like I said, we can't predict. I mean, we may find her in, in an hour from now or several days from now. So there's just no way to predict that. Okay? I know you've mentioned it, but can you talk again about the conditions underneath the lake and why it's so hard to find? Yeah, so with this being a reservoir, there's trees down below. Um, this is a canyon that... Uh, Essentially, they put a dam on and then flooded many years ago. So uh, it's not like a naturally occurring lake, like in a bowl that just has sediment and rocks on the bottom. Uh, you have a creek that runs into it that connects to Lake Pyramid north of here. And then you have a creek that runs out of it and goes to the Santa Clara River. So there is a flow to this lake. Every lake has a certain current. And then in the afternoons, you see how the wind builds up, comes up the canyon, so it pushes the surface water toward the back of the canyon, even though the flow of the creek is coming into the lake. So uh, that creates a little bit of an effect there. Um, but I'm told by some of the divers that even with that current, um, wherever she went down, they're confident that that's where she'll be found. It's just finding that spot uh, that's the difficult part. I mean, you can see the lake's more than two miles long. At its deepest point, it's about 130 feet deep. Uh, there's a lot of area to cover. Okay. 
So my understanding, and, and this was already something that was planned, uh, I believe it's next month, uh, they're going to bring the lake level down significantly, I'm, I'm told, to uh, at si by 65 feet, uh, because they have to do some uh, seismic retrofitting on the dam itself. So that was something that was already planned well in advance, uh, not related to this incident. So, well, yeah. Opening the dam, and then where would that water go? Uh, you, you know what? You'll have to talk to United Water about that. This is their lake and their, their water, and I'm sure they have a, a precise plan on how that's going to happen. Any other questions? Can you your name, sir? Sure. My first name is Eric. It's spelled E-R-I-C. Last name is Busho. It's spelled B-U-S-C-H-O-W. Your title? Uh, Captain. Mm. Ventura County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.